Hello and welcome back, this is Institutoris and I'm continuing playing ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. Last episode we were on the murder scene of Alice Asher. Wait a minute, was it Asher? <laughs> yes, Alice Asher. And now I'm thinking, what was the place? And Antwerpen? No, that's a different country altogether. I think it was um, Andover, yeah, Andover it was it. So, and we have a, it says like right there, yes. I didn't remember, it says there. Yeah, Andover. So, uh, now I think last time we got a letter and, uh, no, this is not the, what we are going to do next. Read the letter. Yes, I will do that. But I saw that we can check the phone. It is now the right time. It never is, I know. It is now the right time. So apparently I am not allowed to... Is that the letter? No, that's a... Magazine. The letter is still on the door, but... Daily Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle of a control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Andover, murder of a tobacconist. Interesting. You want trophy. Newspaper. Thank you. I do enjoy trophies. There's a crocodile. Biscuits and fruits. But let's not digress any longer. And oh, can I? Can I? No doubt about it. Hastings is going bored. Okay. That was something I wasn't expecting. You're not going to get the post? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. I missed the uh, walking cane, which has a... Well, I would like to say duck. Which David Shusha had in the Poirot series. Also that little telescope one. Oh, I need to turn it around. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Well, we can certainly know that the person will person's name will start with B. Probably both names. So we got some compared the new letter with the first one. Yes, there was definitely a signature I letter. As I pointed it out. Thinking. Thinking is good. Let us examine this more closely. Yes. Do I need to just click this? Or... Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Okay. Definitely W A. Let's start. Yes, this I is weird. So am I marking these? Yes, this I is. Yes, this I is weird. Do I need to mark different letters? Mm, the W is not printed properly. It seems like it's okay. Let's start yes, with the I. This I is weird. And does it mean I? Right. Let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, we have the eye. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Well, we already know W. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. It is not. Right, so... let us... Come on. Here we go. Of course. The W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. 
Uh -huh. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. The capital A, definitely. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. It's out of line and right. a little tilted. Let us compare this with the other letter. I'm stating the obvious, of course, but <laughs> what else can I do? <laughs> That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My mm. theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about this case, Hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. What's special about the Andover murder? Uh, okay, let's see. We have material proof. Uh, material proof. Letter announcing the Bexhill crime. Andover ABC guide. Observation by Akio Poirot, theft is not the motive for the crime. The first victim was called Asher. Uh, well, let's start with the Asher and Andover ABC Guide. And Andover and Alice Asher start with the letter A. What can we guess with about the next victim? Well... It will start with B. Bobby Bobinson. So, Poirot, have you found something? Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. Bilbo Baggins? Hopefully it's not Bilbo Baggins. Uh, anything else we can... I've finished with this subject. Okay, you're finished. Uh, anything else I can... Oh. Ah, some cool air. Yeah, some cool air. Give these people air. I shouldn't have watched Total Recall. Recall. Can I talk to you? Can I check you now? No doubt about it. Yes, bold, bold, bold. It may be time to go to Scotland Yard. It may be indeed. Anything else I can... Ooh. Let's get some ego points, hopefully. You're not even close to the mirror. Nice. <laughs> I'll try to see what I can check in here, obviously. Most likely nothing too important. Oh, no, 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 wrong click. I shouldn't have used the right button. Let's use the left button instead. Okay, let's turn around. Andover, Hampshire, population 31,200 inhabitants. I don't know if that helped us at all, but we checked that. An alligator or crocodile, I don't know which one. I know you can uh, see from the snout, is that the right word? That which one they are and of oh and these but i never remember that seems oddly familiar kind of painting well to be honest all of these look um i'm guessing this is just the mirror i can we do something with the chair <sighs> <sighs> Indeed, I have the same feeling most of the time. Oh, I... is this books or the chair? It's the chair. <sighs> yeah, the the areas to are quite huge. I don't know how this works with the uh, controller. Maybe a little it's bit. It's impossible better. to get through to Scotland Yard. Is it? Okay. I guess these are I've the pages. finished with this subject. So I think we just used the door. By the way, let's see. 
leave Whitehaven. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, the door would be something you should use when leaving from the building. There are other ways, but not preferable. That car is shaking quite a lot. It may be time to go to Scotland Yard. Thank you, Hastings. Where would I be without you? So let's take a taxi. To Scotland Yard, please. I don't know, but these graphics are quite, well, cute, maybe? <laughs> Cutish. I was a little wary when I saw the pictures first that how this will look, look but uh, I, honestly, I'm positively surprised. Pistol over there, some books, medals. Jap has invested a great deal in his career. Indeed he do has. Apparently he's been quite successful. Order of Merit Dispatch and Medals Board. Jap Shoot. is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. I, I believe so, yes. We have a map. London. I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Well, honestly, actually, you never get bored anywhere. Well, usually where you go, people die. Alice Asher was murdered in Andover. The ABC killer's first murder. Shropshire and Shrewsbury. And three markers so are we co uh, am i going to expect we are going to have three dead bodies well b c and d again i don't know if this how closely this goes with the books and tv series but can i yes let's see jab appears to be snowed under i think yeah lots of papers I think I saw the coffee. Oh, cold tea. Okay. Off the hook. Um, Jab appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. I won't, but... Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilon C. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats? I fear so. Good God, Poirot. Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. Okay, uh, the killer attacks old ladies who run a shop. Well... Killer only attacked one old lady who ran a shop. The next victim name will start with a B. The murder is unpredictable. Well, he's not unpredictable, but the problem is <laughs> that doesn't really help because we know somebody with name B starting with B he will die in Bexhill, and I imagine there are quite a lot of them there. So he's not unpredictable or she because we don't know. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I saw the name Asha clearly written over the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received the letter mentioning Bexil, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Yeah, we should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. 
You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Poirot? Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Right. And this definitely looks similar to the TV series area. Uh, so in somewhat, it's at least following the story. At least the TV series. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. Yeah, so far it... Walrus Moustache. Yeah, uh, in the TV series, the first murder was uh, obviously a tobacco shop and in the book. And then what's the beach? And these are the similar. I can't remember the third one. I remember it when I see it. It's, like I said, it's been a long time, but... Uh, but it will be interesting to see how this goes. Again, I can't remember the murderer, and they it might... It still seems to be a pleasant little town. And they might have changed the murder. Okay, we have these. Modern bungalow. Well, <laughs> yes. A bird. Can I check the bird? No. There's... Oh. Victorian house. What else? Do I need to... Ah, Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture. Although, personally, I prefer more modern buildings. Yes, you do. You're a snob. But funny guy, anyways. I'll try to see if there's anything before we go to the beachfront. Obviously, there's the taxi. And I'm guessing they are suspecting her boyfriend. It was something like that in the TV series at least. If I remember correctly. My memory is a bit hazy. Like I said, it's been a long time si since I saw, saw that. Can I inspect Chap? Can I inspect you, Hastings? Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder, but a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. Hmm. Okay. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides her destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing. Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine. Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. Time to check the murder scene. I would, I, at least I, oh, do we have, how was the victim killed? Well, we don't know. We need to find six clues. 
Okay. Prime scene. Well, obviously. String book. Well, I had said the guess guess that she was strangled, but was she knocked out or not? There's a key over there. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. Yes, and obviously the ABC opened from B. Lenly, Lendilo, Landover, Maman? No idea how you're pronouncing those. Banwell, Bexhill, Bexhill, Bristol. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. Colony surprised. No shoes. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either yeah. the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Maybe in the bungalow? A rope? A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. And these marks have been left by a rope or a braided cloth. I'm guessing the silk cloth. And is that is the skirt wet? The young woman wasn't wearing Chris. shoes or a coat, and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Okay. Either the murderer stole her belongings, or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. So we have checked that. Oh, apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. So she was at least partly calm before it happened. Okay. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Now, how was the victim killed? Uh, none of the belongings. She did not struggle. That is true. Great. I misclicked. Let's try that again. Silk belt. Uh, marks on the neck. The wig. Yeah, strangled by. The poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, what are the common points between the Andover murder and the one in Bexhill? Well, obviously we have ABC Guide from Bexhill page and uh, letter announcing the crime. Nope. Well, this is basically, well, both had the letter. The killer signs his crimes with the ABC Guide. Are the crimes in Andover and Bexhill work at the same murder? Yes, because we had the letter. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, declaration, observation. She was just one. The press does not. Letter announcing Pixel crime. But isn't this the killer signs his crimes with the ABC guide? Yes. She has just one wound at the back of her head. But isn't this the one I need? All the crimes in Andover and Bexhill work of the same murder. Am I missing something? Isn't... The killer signs his crimes with ABC guide. Okay, I'm gonna try all of these. Wait, what? 
A medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. So can I see the great gray cells things? Because what did I do wrong? The press does not know that the ABC guide was found in Andover. Well, yeah, obviously that takes off the copycat. But we still have the letter, which we know are from the killer. Hmm. Well, okay, okay, I I kind of see that, yes. Identify the victim. Uh, I think there's... I saw a lock there. Oh, there was another one, but uh, I was almost certain that... Oh, there was a lock all, all, all over this, this place. This hat is locked. Okay, is this the one we need to open? Oh, it's either six or nine. The key does not fit the lock. Okay. Wait, what? Ooh. Thinking? It's a code wheel. Okay. So a dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Right, so we need can I inspect this at all? A small key found fast fastened uh oh do but the barn wrist, it's too small to yes. So it's a number six, yes. Uh, oh, maybe I just put 666. <laughs> Let's see. Probably not. Firstly, I have to enter the Padlock's code. Okay, what about 99? Uh, do I have any idea what it could be? Oh, so I can check this. Ah, 715, it would seem. Let's go, 7, 1, and 5. B-I-N-G-O. Bingo was his name. Now. Okay, come up. And here we have stuff. Shoes. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. Yeah, I would say so. Although... What the press is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Here yes. is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Top brand lipstick. That's nice. And what is this? Ginger Cat Restaurant. Betty's first, Betty's day, first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. But... So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Nice. Oh. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat, the cafe slightly further along the beach. 
But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have a address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. I think that bird is spying us. Uh, can I check the... And there was something about thumbnails uh, in the main menu. I should probably check. Uh, photo found in a beach hut. It's the victim and a young man. Well-suited couple. Probably his boyfriend. Let's turn around. Any names? No. Interesting. No names at all. But uh, we will find out sooner or later. She was waitress at the Ginger Cat. 20 years old in Bexhill. And now we are going to the Ginger Cat. Because of course we are. I'll check if there's anything else I can observe. Probably not. Oh, no, no, no. We already observed this place, okay. I'll see if there's anything else. This hat is locked. Yeah. I'm guessing there's nothing over those places, so... No point to do that, and uh, we leave poor Betty's corpse. Uh, are we going to use taxi per chance, or are we just walking? Wait. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? Well, I would hazard to guess because it says it's a ginger cat restaurant. <laughs> It was quite close. Newspaper kiosk. So we are not using the name then. Couple of. Yep. This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. Oh, do you mean. Wait, what? Do you mean this? Which photo? The m the workplace photo, which had the name of the well, why it's stuttering. This is definitely where the photo yeah. I found in the hut was taken. Yes, it is. So let's move on. I don't know why it's stuttering. That is weird. Uh, With all these tourists, these shops must be thriving. Maybe, maybe. With all this tur yeah, that bird is definitely With spying. All these tourists spying on us, Hastings. I fear that this case is far from being solved. Oh, okay. Cert. But how many times will he kill before I do? Hmm. Anything else? I fear that this case is far from being solved. Come on, Poirot. You'll find the ah. killer. Cert. But how many times will he kill before I do? Right. Okay. Can we enter? Yes, we can. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. <laughs> okay. I'll just take a little look-see. This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place, and above all, no creases. Mm. Poirot approves. What else? Obviously, we are going to check our composure through the mirror. Because, of course, we have to look fine. Oh, yes. Yes. Of course, we got the ego points. <laughs> I have to be very careful that I will see every mirror I can because of course I want to see every mirror. Anything else? I don't think there's anything else. We cannot enter these areas. Cheekbox. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Well, that's a pity. Let's observe. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. 
Hmm. Quite possibly. Street appearance. Behind the counter. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. Well... How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. Okay, what can we do now? Ah, what are those? I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Right, we have time. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? No idea. So, Millie, Mary and Betty. This page won't help me. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Mm. No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. Well, Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? Okay, let's go and check if we can. So, 5 p.m. to 7.30. Uh, one hour, hour five. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Yes, that would be Betty because table two, hour five. I think I saw that number five already. It's right over here. Betty wasn't serving on her own at these two times. Let's keep searching. 7.20, okay. 6.30. What number is this? Uh, 02, maybe? Uh, so this definitely should be Betty's. And uh, so this. Most probably a family. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Yeah, it's the whiskey. This one. Most probably a single man. A whiskey lover. Maybe the murderer? Maybe, maybe not. Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. Sure, it will. So. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found. Dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. See that. On the contrary, it is an advert for the town. Hmm... No, let's go with this. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee. Her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. Oh, sorry. Um, gentleman friend might have attacked her. Ask if the man in the photo is her... Yes, let's... Oh, let's ask about the photo. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Mm. <laughs> that could work. But I'll go with this. Ask if their relationship was going well. Do you think there may have been some problems between them? 
I'm not on those sort of terms with my staff. Now, please excuse me. I have work to do. Well, that didn't work. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. So, now we have the objectives. She is owner of the Ginger Cat. She doesn't know very much about her employees' private lives. Uh, uh, understandable. Uh, High Street, number 22. We probably need to come back here later, maybe, but now we're done. Follow Eastings. Don't run. Are we taking the taxi now? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. Yes. Oh, is the... Or are you saying... No. Is that... Is it? Apartment building? Is that so simple? Well, color me surprised again. And I'm stuck with the Hastings. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. <laughs> you are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. Megan. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair. The very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Stockings, you say? There were stockings at the tobacco shop. So what can I do? I can't. Quite a lot, indeed. Let's start with this. Megan invited me to examine her sister's bedroom. I should take advantage of the opportunity. Yes, but I want to check everything else. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one-off, without a doubt. Without a doubt, yes. And piano. So... Well... It would not be polite to visit the house without being invited to do so. Wait, what? It would not. Okay. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. Well, we have violin. We have piano. And... They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. Definitely. And what else? There's a door. Can I do it? Or is this just going up? It would not be. Yeah, I think that's upstairs still. Family photos and fires. Okay. Okay, 
we can't go through there unfortunately apparently we are moving faster if we double click Ooh, mirror never leave without checking the mirror first looking fine more points anything i need to do or see in here no so let's observe what is she feeling at the moment it looks like her makeup is yes well hard stare Okay, I thought it was makeup, uh, fuzzy makeup, but for the frame, well, <laughs> I hope it does include the photo also, not just the frame. I... Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Okay. So, what can you tell us? Uh... Fiance? Your sister had a fiance, I believe. Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Hmm. Um. Was your sister seeing anyone else? My sister wasn't a child, sir. She used to go out. She enjoyed films, dancing. She was a very good girl who didn't hang around with men. That's what they always say, no? That's what they always say. I'll go with this. I am not interested in what people say. I am interested in the truth, Mademoiselle Barnard. If you only knew how much I would like to talk with someone who does not know that your sister is dead and could provide me with a true portrait of her beyond the formalities. The truth is that my sister was a silly little fool. I tried to reason with her, but she behaved like an idiot. <laughs> in what way? She used to say that if she was going to marry Don, she might as well have some fun now. I understand. Please continue. Oh. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. Well, I shall. Thank you. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. <laughs> Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the chief inspector finds him. Okay, so, XM Betty's bedroom, yes, undoubtedly. Megan Barnard, 28 years old, is the sister of the late Betty Barnard. She was jealous of her sister's beauty. Donald Fraser, he is Betty Barnard's fiance. Where's the Marion? She's the owner of the Ginger Cat. She doesn't know. Yeah, we know that. And she was a waitress at the Ginger Cat. She used to like being coated and going out. Engaged to Donald Fraser. Okay. So. It is not the right time. Okay. Here we are. Paintings. Looking okay. at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date. 
the evidence definitely points out to that and there's a mirror oh yes i look fabulous oh and more points yes definitely more ego points i think that's the mirror still and apparently she liked to sing a box of new stockings where have you seen that before it looks like Betty has a very busy life. Cinema ticket, um, Mr. and Mrs. Adam Leeton, Essex request the pleasure of your company at the dance celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary, Saturday 7th of June at 8 o'clock Diamond Club. Let's start with Blue Lobster. Cordially invite to dinner party. Yeah, stylish restaurant, cinema ticket, impossible law. And this. But he liked luxury and going out. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Yes, I would say so. And now we have... It looks like Betty was also a music lover. The same as her family. We have... Metronome? Yes. Microphone. And of course, notes. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. It would seem like it, yes. Uh, what else? We have something over there and over here also. Something on this clock bothers me. Because there's a hatch. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. No, okay, I'll... Is this something I... Can I do something with these already? Huh. So... I need to open this and... Hmm. The cogs are blocked by this wooden panel. Okay. So I need to move these wooden panels. How do I do that? The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. So there are three positions with these. Okay. I'll check if there's anything else I can see. This metal disc is stuck. Right. There's something on this side. There's paper. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. Can I take it? Strange. A sheet of... Can I not take it? This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. So there's definitely something there. Yes. This wooden panel is blocked. Okay. What about the clock hand? There, that's better. <laughs> so it should be 12 o'clock. How does that help? Okay. The cogs are blocked. Yes, they are. Okay. Is there any... This wooden panel is blocked. Hint. Can I do something with this now? This metal disc is stuck. No. Okay. Before we continue... Attention, if you quit the puzzle now, it will rain metalized. You will have to start again. Yes, okay, we haven't done that much. I want to check this first. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. Mm, really? Can we take it a now? So, what? Laudanum? Is that a laudanum bottle? This small key should be useful to me. Hmm. I've finished with this subject. I've finished with this. No, probably not a laudanum bottle then. 
or so one of two there's something here somewhere medicine to prevent voice ah. loss did betty have problems with our voice okay we got that and uh the asher had uh, also cough medicine right So, I don't think there's anything... I, I record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. Mm. I'd be interested to hear it. Something on this clock bothers me. So now we have a key, Something which we... On this clock. What was that? No idea. So, okay, this goes to there. That's better. Twelve. So, yeah, twelve is correct one. There's a paper there. Yes. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. Hmm. Anything? Whoa! What? This leg is not well attached. Okay. This decoration appears. Okay, it's fastened. Okay. What about this? Hmm. So these I cannot move. So what happened? I opened this. Can I pull it out? No. So did it open this one? This wooden panel is blocked. Hmm. Ah. Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Right. Look, a key. And we have some numbers. Okay, take the key. Thank you. This could be useful. And what do we have here? What's this? Three, two, one, two. So... So let me think, maybe, well, this could be definitely for the top part. So top left would be three, top right would be one, bottom left two, bottom right two. And uh, I let's assume when I open this panel. What a strange mechanism that I don't. Yes, so this would be here both of these were two this and this and this was one wasn't it ah what now what now so i definitely need an object to make these cogs turn right so I think we can use this then. The central cock is blocked. Hmm. Can I do anything with this now? This metal disc is Okay. Center center cock is blocked, yes. Strange. Can I interact with these at all? I definitely need an Okay, okay. So maybe I roll this first, it goes up, it unlocks this, then I can move this. Yeah, let's try with that. Okay. 
Can I now use this? Ah, something clicked on the front of the clock. Definitely. And a new lock has appeared. New lock. What? Well, this is intriguing. Now we have a letter. This could be useful. I do hope so. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again. Adrian. Okay, so... A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. Hmm. So what do we have here? We have the... We still have the key. Listen to Betty's record. Betty's record, so we need to find it. Engage... Yeah, we know that already. Do we have anything in here? What are the common points between the Andover murder and... Oh, okay. So we need to find the recording. I would imagine. Okay. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Hmm. Record sleeve. If I would be... A... Let's go downstairs. Maybe that... Oh! Or can I... Is there something over here? No, it seems I cannot interact with that. I go with that. This is at least a recording. Well, gramophone. Ah, thinking. We need to use... Oh, I need to look closer. There's the keyhole. Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding? Hopefully the recording. What is this? Oh no. This looks like solfege. No idea what that means. This looks like solfege. Hopefully I don't have to know that. We have... Come on, can I take this? I can't take it. One, two plus two, one plus one plus one plus. This looks like solfege. Okay, we we. So am I using this? Ah, record found in the Bar Bernard's gramophone, Betty, followed by seventy-eight T written on this record. Fine, and anything else? No. So, do I just stick it here? Come on. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. Ah. Can I? That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. Uh... There's the needle. I probably need to move. Wait, what is that? Aha. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. Oh no. So it was one plus one plus one, but let's see. So these Okay. This looks like sol. Wait. This looks like solfege. There is probably a link with what I saw in the drawer. So what is the... We need to see one thing first. I don't think 
I need to really know what that is. Hopefully. <laughs> so that is bound to be a... So this is the answer. So I need things that basically become this. And let's see. Do I get this right? So we already have, well, this plus this is this, but we need three. Three, two, one, three. Is it one line? Basically from three to two to one to this. Or from this to here. Or is it... Mm. Okay, I have no idea. I'm just trying. I'm gonna put this, this, and this and see if it works. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Because this that I can... There is bound to be a clue somewhere. And so I cannot change this. Oh, we have quite a lot of these, but we have three, four, five. But the markings on the paper is only one, two, three. Maybe it's this. Hopefully it's this. I wouldn't want to use hint. How do I know if this is working? Uh... No. So then it could be... Well, one thing I could try is obviously... Well, it's not that obvious, if you're completely honest. Hmm. Is it this then? One, two, two? Maybe? Because I don't believe it's one, one, and two. I think it needs to be one group, so it would be one, two, two, maybe? It, it's worth a shot. It definitely is bound to be a clue somewhere. Yes. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. Ah. <sighs> At least I got that correct. By accident. So what that oh zero zero A What was the recording? Seventy T and seventy eight. Seventy eight T Come on, four, five, six, seven. Why didn't I do it like this? Come on. I just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. Let's just say that this gramophone is one of the hardest things to get playing. <laughs> Imagine do this all the time. Can I... That doesn't work. I must... Okay. Not yet. Finally? Am I now allowed to put this? Yes. I do I just click this? Yes, we do that. And uh, do I need to go back? Let's try. It looks like something goes in here. Oh, oh right. We need to crank it up, of course. Silly me, I totally forgot the crank. Do I are we ready? Oh, Donald, we're in the middle of recording. Sorry, Betty, but it's not wise. The doctor said you should rest your voice. You're such a killjoy sometimes.
that he was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her throat? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course, she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. Okay. Um, what, what are we going to do now? Continue questioning Megan. Okay, I'll do that on this episode. And next episode, we have to... Because uh, it seems the... Uh, obviously, the cases are going going to be a uh, longer than the first one so i don't well i have no idea how long this will take this chapter so i questioned the megan and after that i end this episode so hello it looks like this woman is single but she has feelings for someone yes are we just checking all the same things Bae and Donald. Rimming with tears. She's looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she's studying in this manner? Uh, Elgin's eye. So what do we have in here? What had Betty Blatt to do with her evening? Let's see what we can put in there. Uh, Betty used to go out a great deal. Betty had probably planned to meet someone that evening. Okay. There are a lot of visitors at this time of a year. This time of year. An, un un an unaccompanied guest came to Ginger Cat and ordered a white horse whiskey. The victim has marks on the neck. Uh, we are definitely missing clues. Uh, I don't try to do that just yet. So, Megan. They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? He's a bright man with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go with Donald was in love with Betty. Donald appeared to be very much in love with your sister. Yes, he was mad about her. Mad, you say? Being madly in love can often be destructive, and Mr. Fraser was known for being jealous, I believe. No more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. No, okay. Uh, I ask her to cooperate. I am not your enemy, Mademoiselle Bernard. And you are not my friend either. Mr. Poirot, sir. Yes, but your lies are not helping Mr. Fraser, or you for that matter. Hmm. Case is complex, or why. I'm asking why she is protecting Betty's fiance. I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Protect him? I hope you're not suggesting. That you are Fraser's accomplice? There is nothing to suggest that, at least not yet. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent that he was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. 
but they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying one day... One day... Well? He'd commit murder. Ooh, not looking too good for Donald. Um, ask if she fears that Donald is suspect. Yes. So you were afraid that he would become our main suspect. I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Exactly. Had you not told me about the case, I would never have dared to tell you about this little matter. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, Mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. <clears throat> Plan to do with her evening. So we have declaration by Megan Barnard. Betty lied to Donald about what she was planning to do the day before. Okay. Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. Let's go with the Betty had planned to meet someone that evening. Obviously, Betty liked to turn off because she had a date with another man. Did Betty know her assailant? A great deal. Visitors. Uh, unaccompanied guest came to Ginger Cat and ordered White House whiskey. With him, I'll go with this that Betty used to go out a great deal. That was not correct one. Um, well, let's go with this then. Whiskey. Nope. <laughs> I'm choosing poorly today. So, visitors this time of year. Wait, what? Am I missing something here? Did Betty know her assailant? The victim has marks on the neck. Is this the... The man seduced... Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Oh, what is Megan Bernal's behavior... Behavior hiding? <sighs> okay, um, the victim was pretty. Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. Well, she was hiding that. Megan get looking at the photo of Donald and Betty. Oh. Loved her sister. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Megan really liked, yes, this one and looking at the photo of Donald and Betty. Yes, Megan had a soft spot for Donald. Did Megan Bernard have a motive for killing her sister? Well, uh... Soul Air is not loved her sister. Megan is an intelligent woman. Betty was a good singer. Victim was pretty. Uh, victim was pretty, maybe? Nope. Is it this then? The, yeah. Megan was jealous of Betty. Right. So, let's see. Question Donald Fraser that we will do next episode. Uh, suspect Donald Fraser. He is Betty Barnard's fiancé. He was jealous and had a quick temper. Uh, Nancy Bodley, Alice Asher, Betty Barnard engaged to Donald Fraser. Yes. Uh, 28 years old. It's the sister. 
It's the sister of the late Betty Barnard. She works in London. She was jealous of her sister's beauty. She was very fond of her sister, although she did not approve of how she behaved towards Donald Fraser. Right. Now, one thing I want to see. What was the... Did Donald have a motive? Well, uh, so this we already know. Yes, he was what she was hiding, but the to do with the evening. The man seduced Betty before taking her to the beach, where she strangled her. But yeah, okay. Did we are miss? Oh, material proof. The two murders were premeditated and were carried out by the same murderer. Donald was very much in love with Betty. Did Donald have a motive? For Betty's murder, obviously she. He probably had. I'm guessing one is going to be Betty used to go out a great deal, but I'm not going to build this just yet. And there's the mustache. So hopefully this is saved on here. So next episode we will go see Donald and see if we can rattle his cage and. Uh, get some sort of a truth out of him but that is for the next episode so i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you next time until then goodbye